MD, CEO of Six Sense Interiors, something um, I had started almost 20 years ago, um, born out of a passion for making spaces look beautiful. It's been a lot of grace to be able to juggle and wear the so many hats that I mm -hmm. currently do. Um, and so that is pretty much it. I cannot take any credit whatsoever for the woman who I am and the woman who I'm evolving into being. I can't take any credit. It's all grace, the grace and the mercy of God. Oh, um, we have a rising youth population. Um, more than 70% of Nigerians are youth. And the competition is going to get intense. So if you think that we have a job problem, we have a talent problem today, there's a high chance that it's going to be worse over time because it will be a lot competitive. And we think that it's important for parents to towards a competitive age. And um, God has given each parent children so that they can um, guide them into the fulfillment of purpose. So it really isn't about a child being this or a child being that. Um, I think when parents know that the almost the sole purpose of them being custodians is for them to be guides towards them fulfilling fully destiny, I think it simplifies a lot of ambiguity about parent, parenthood. Yeah. And so, um, to give a child a head start, I think it first starts spiritually. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get all spiritual here, but um, you can send a child to the best schools. You can send them to um, give them the best supposed support all through their lives as they still turn out not as um, you want, so the society wants, or even they want. You know? And there's this, um, because there's a, there's, um, a gap, all right, in the people who they have aspired into being and they're not there they're not quite there yet you know depression sets in and you know so many other things set in and so um, grounding a child spiritually I think is like the first thing that um, a parent needs to ensure is done I once learned um, during one of the courses on parenthood that um, one of the best ways to get a child multitasking is to ensure that they do a lot of housework and you know I heard it and I first had a crease on my forehead housework but then I find that the reason why quite a lot of women are able to do so many things juggle many things wear many hats is because they had started with um, being integrated into the culture of doing domestic chores and so whether boy or whether girl I think it's important that parents get their children into um, a lot of house chores you know they may be going to school but they should have responsibility um, and I think it's a part of the brain right that um, it's um, a very subliminal um, action that goes on but what happens is one lens time management one learns to complete tasks, you know, one learns responsibility as a result. And so I believe that um, it's important to um, help a child, training them to do basic house chores, washing plates, washing clothes, washing napkins, folding things, you know, and not just as a one-off, as something that they do routinely, mm -hmm. yeah. And as we even talk about, we're talking about teenagers and we're talking about um, the future, all right? Um, one of the things that this fast-paced life is causing is people are never able to adequately balance um, life. Getting to know the child, understanding your child's personality. It's something that's taken for granted, but we know that there could be three siblings under the same roof, same parents, you know, same blood technically flowing through all three of them. Mm -hmm. However, they are very different in their approach to things. Their personalities are extremely different. And this is why it's the responsibility of parents to get to know their children. Um, sometimes parents kind of expect their children to be the ones to open up like a flower. But it doesn't just happen. Parents need to be proactive about it. They need to make it happen. Meaning 
parents need to draw out um, their words by um, in conversation all right they need to draw out their words their children um, by being vulnerable with their children you know um, in an atmosphere where children can be themselves there's so much parents would learn about their children and I also want to add that there's no there's no shame there's no reason why not to research the personalities of the children that way one is able to identify what their weaknesses are and readily help them one is able to um, harness their strengths um, by understanding the one is able to know um, or and help them anticipate where they can where they may encounter challenges in life it could be socially it could be um, mentally it could be um, emotionally in whatever area it is when we get to know our children we can help anticipate or we can help foresee where they may encounter challenges um, when you know the personality of your child it is then much easier to begin to channel um, their strengths into certain direction you know and so it's easier for us to also look at their giftings you know so you know the personality and you know what personality and behavior does is that it's almost like an eye opener to where the person's strengths are yeah where the person's strengths are you know and so in knowing a person's strengths you know you're able to understand their gifts you know you can tell if they have got high leadership abilities you can tell if they have reconciliatory potential you know if they are more service inclined you know as a parent you begin to see and how these gifts can then help their professional lives how these giftings can help their educational lives you know and so having understood the temperament of a child the next thing would be to understand um, where the giftings of a child is so i want to fall back to my faith you know and um i hold no apologies that as a parent the only way i have been able to thrive as a parent is in understanding that my children are taught by the lord you know and therefore i there's an, already an instruction all right there's a template that my children ought to follow my my role as a parent is to guide them right and so um yeah so understanding their personalities understanding their giftings yeah and just helping them work through their challenges um the open door policy always works in every home yeah the child can change their mind on what it is that they want to do a million and one times you know and um then having the access to come to their parents with a brand new brainwave is fantastic because i you know i often say to my children that the jobs for the future are probably not existent today yeah yeah and so are we training our children for the future if you missed any of the any of what okay, as i said um, don't miss these three points firstly chores is not child labor it teaches um children how to be responsible how to take up tasks how to manage time as she's highlighted and then you have to learn what your child children's personalities are and learn their giftings and try to tailor it um, towards what would be best fit for their career so i like to ask now we have parents who have labored and they seem to have higher learning, learning teachers. I, I see many teacher parents outsource the work of preparing their children for the future to the school. And um, on, on Gridley, I sometimes called a teacher, I called a parent and, and said, we are Gridley, we can help your child doing this. We have information on your child's performance and you can do this to help the child improve. And, and the parent's response was, I'm paying your school to do that. Why am I paying the school to make their child successful and then I, I need to get extra service? At what point was the at what point do parents over delegate um, this task to school? Uh, where, at what point should parents be involved? Is it fine for parents to just hands off and trust the school in the process, or is it even wrong for parents to go to school every now and then and say, "I don't know what I do on my child. I need to be more involved." It's almost impossible. It has become for parents to be hands on two four seven with their children, and so parents are paid for extracurricular activities. To keep their children more engaged in school rather than be idle in the home you know um, abdication of, of responsibility is when a parent is 
unable to know where their children's subject strengths are and where the subject weaknesses are or where their behavioral gaps, all right? The, the school should not be informing the parent of their child's behavior, you know, or even character, you know. A parent should work with the school, you know, hand in glove to um, ensure that they um, are able to either help reduce the weaknesses of the child and help strengthen their potentially strong points, you know. And so um, it is very wrong for parents to um, think of application, you know. However, the Nigerian society makes it really tough, you know, and that is why there are institutions like yours, you know, where um, you come in a bit to assist. Yeah. The school system has also failed, you know, in that the school system seems to be more um, economically driven. Yeah. So it's all about parents paying for this and paying for that. And sometimes it's as if there's no value, you know, because unfortunately, maybe it's at the end of the term or at the end of the school year that a parent gets to know um, that the child has not been doing well in a particular subject, you know, or they learn the gravity of um, 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 weakness that the child has in that subject area, you know. Um, one of the things that the school should do and do easily is to understand what the future goals are for this ch child. So they understand the temperament, they understand the gifting of the child, they understand the child's um, 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 what the child gravitates to, what the child's preferences are, what the child enjoys to do, right? And so um, in a school system where the school is child focused, mm -hmm. all right, they would work with the parents to ensure that um, the child doesn't make mistakes choosing subjects, for instance. The child is exposed to a variety of um, subjects and topics and um, vocations to the point where um, the, the child early on is knowledgeable about what they like to do and what subjects would help them in getting where they want to go early yes early you know and so this these are some of the challenges that the school system has and that has and, and i suppose also that because of the um, financial implications of a lot of the aids right parents are a bit wary, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so, having known that the school system has failed and there has to be intervention, mm -hmm. all right? Um, Grady, that's where Grady then comes in, yeah. yeah where um, it's the passion as well as the integrity of the purpose for setting this up, all right? shines through to parents that it is more than just um, a financial demand that is being laid on them. It is an understanding of the failure of the school system and it's in a bid to correct um, the anomaly in the system. Um, yeah. okay. Speaking on how to give your child an edge, there is a whole lot that has been said that's pointed out to these learners. In, for today's learners, you as a parent need to be able to identify what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what their personalities, what they gravitate towards, and then be more involved in what they school. So you don't just abdicate, you don't just ab abandon parents work to the school, you have to be involved in what school is. But I would like to make a case for school, and I would like that you make a case for the parents. Okay. So schools have recently told us that parents just want their child to be first. Parents are so competitive that even when you give the child homework, you find the mother or the father or the other brother doing the homework on behalf of the child, which is negating the purpose. The initial purpose was for was to be a form of evaluation, so the teacher can tell where to help the child improve. But we have parents being in a bit to prepare the child to the, for the future and quote, become so competitive that they now even wait, don't let me accuse okay. parents. Parents will naturally follow through with whatever it is that they think the system expects or demands, mm. all right? And so um, if a parent thinks that coming first is what um, would give their child a competitive edge, 
they will do everything to make sure the child comes first. Mm -hmm. It is up to the school to um, reorientate parents into understanding that it is not about coming first. It is about a child um, interfacing with school to the point where they like school, mm -hmm. they enjoy school, and they have a parents and the children have a more holistic approach to education. Right. It is not about competition. It's about you getting comfortable with whatever area it is that you found as you're 40. So in school, it could be sports. You know, for some children, it's gaming. For some other children, they are more academic. All right. Um, teachers and the school also explaining to parents that it's one is not better than the other. Yeah. It's good to have a great balance of every aspect of education, but one does not augur better or work better, you know, than the other. Mm -hmm. Can we get children comfortable? So for me, it's like math, for instance, mm -hmm. all right? Math has been, has been positioned as being a terror. I want to see the school that makes, that simplifies math to the point where it no longer terrorizes children. I'd like to see this, um, this, elephant in the room that has been there for hundreds of years, all right? I want to see a, a whole school that, you know, math has become like the drama or the arts, mm -hmm. where it is not a feared subject anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can school flip this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is what I am saying as a parent, all right? And this is where institutions like yours come in, where you come in to say, math doesn't have to be a terror. All right? Can our approach to math be very different? Yeah? Can we please um, put the spotlight more on English, for instance? All right? Can we demand more in terms of um, vocabulary, in terms of the enunciation of words? Can, can we kind of shift these so that children come out better balanced? You know, the Nigerian school has seems over the years to be so focused on um, IGCSE results, yeah. 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 These I mean, Cambridge sure. results, yeah. you understand? Yeah. Can we see how these children will thrive in near real life situations? Yeah. And so this is what it means to be equipping the children for life. Yeah. Yeah. One question in one, really. And if there is anything I'm taking away from this, I'm saying that even our schools, we need to create the kind of environments that rewards improvement rather than rewards grades you know so it's not just enough to say that this child your child is first position in school or third position in school i think it's more important to say your child is making x percentage improvements and this was where your child was at the beginning of the time this is where your child is at the end of the term and um thank you very much Robert. this this is very helpful I'm, I'm, i believe that the parents community really appreciates this um, god bless you I'm wondering, parents, especially middle class parents, really, really like their kids a lot. And because of this, they go extra mile. Now, because some service providers, certain persons trying to sell products, know that parents love their child. They pull parents in different direction. So these parents come back to say, I want my child to learn how to play soccer because footballers are the best learners in the world. And, and just ob objectively, just on create a platform for the child in the future. And it comes back next week and say, I learned programming is the in thing. Maybe um, my child should become a programmer. Mm -hmm. And then next time it comes back and say, I hate their pain doctors they well overseas. And in fact, if my child is a doctor, there's a high chance that I try to travel out. I want my child to learn medicine. So we have parents caught in different directions in this way. What would be your advice to such parents? Parents need to understand their children's personality types their temperaments as well as their gifting, you know. We wouldn't have these issues if parents understood the giftings of their children, right? And I think it's extremely important that we begin to think more because, you know, what, whatever a child is born to do, the child will thrive at it. When you throw a child into an environment, no matter how great that environment is, but it is not habitat, you know, it doesn't come naturally Natural. to the child, all right? The child will struggle. What we want to achieve is to place our children in areas they face least resistance, meaning they are 
happy to be challenged in that area because they love it. All right. They're happy to stay up late. All right. To read up on it because they love it. They're happy to um, spend extra time, extra hours on this subject matter because they love it. All right. We as parents, it starts with us. It starts with us um, stopping um, getting on that bandwagon of what is popular, what is fast, what's fad now. It starts with us understanding what the areas where the child can excel. Yeah. And um, so the work, the onus is on us as parents. Yeah. Because everything that we do has been guaranteed to succeed. It could be farming, it could be um, poetry, it could be pottery, it could be um, um, painting, it could be f being a physicist. Whatever it is, we can thrive, but it has to be our niche. How do you tell what your child is struggling with? How can you tell that your child has a strength and this is a strength? I think that these are real questions that um, Papa has been pointing to. Um, after this video, I'll share some resources to help take the personality test. Um, before personality test got to your books, how, how, was, how do parents find out what, what their child's strong at? Is it a natural way to just know your child's personality type? What the personality profile thing does is, you know, people have just um, done a little more research. They've compartmentalized personalities, and it's much easier for you to almost tick the box as to what personality type one is. All right, and so um, it doesn't change or alter the person's personality. It just brings it out or shows it out, you know. And so um, getting the personality. So I mean, our personalities have been this way from creation. You know, it's just research that has formulated it into um, boxes that we can then or labels, you know, for the lack of a better word. And so I'd say that it is worth researching because if you ask a lot of parents, they don't even know their personality types. Do you understand? They don't know their strengths, they don't know their weaknesses, they don't know their proclivities. And so it's important that parents know what their personalities are, you know. And that way, it's even easier to relate to the children. So I've got two cholerics and one melancholic in my family as children. All right? Yeah. And so dealing with all three, is the approach to dealing with my three children is very different. Yeah. So I've got a, a, a flag um, as a husband, all right? Yeah. I've got um, two cholerics and I've got this melancholic. And so it's a pot period of human beings, mm -hmm. you know, that has to be dealt with. And so to use the same um, um, method, you know, it's colossal. Do you understand? Yeah. You know, devising different techniques for each of these personalities is what can make a success out of um, everything. At some point in my life, I was um, a lot more science inclined. At another point, I was art inclined because at some point, it, it seemed as if I really did not have any definite personality. I, I just take the shape of the things that I admire and and the kind of environment that I am. I, I think I've seen learners do that a lot, where the type of environment, the type of parenting, the type of structures that parents create shape them towards something. As I say, someone has a disciplinary father that's so strong and child thinks that I want to be in the military. Because it, it's in a hard, strong life and values that he knows that so well. Um, what kind of environment can parents create? How do parents create the type of environment that shapes their kids? There's no point in elaborating on that. But to create the environment that the child can excel in and thrive in is to create one where um, a child or a person can be the, their best selves. And your best self comes when you have um, good examples. So back to it is that parents in themselves have got to be good examples to their children. All right? They have to exemplify values. All right? And so as a family, what are the core values in, that, in your home? All right. As a parent, what values do you uphold? Right. What are um, um, your strengths as a family, as a family unit together? All right. It's all of these things that come to play in forming a person into being who they have been designed to be. So you can have an, an extremely talented person who's grown up in 
um, a very lackluster um, family, family setting, setting. All right. Unfortunately, talent is not everything. Mm -hmm. All right. We're finding now that perseverance, a lot of Grits, hard work, yeah. you know, and grit, you know, goes even further than talent. Mm -hmm. All right. And so you'd find that a person born in a home where um, exposure or educational, educationally, they are not premium advantage, yeah. yes advantage however because they have been grown they've been groomed with discipline all right you find that those sorts of kids thrive better they have a resilience you know they are more um, um obedient to structure yeah they're better self-disciplined okay and so it all starts with the home front all right it all starts with the parents what do you want to see and parents often forget that you know how we train these children today is how they are going to in, in turn teach us yeah because parents will eventually become babies however financially balanced um, a, a parent is you get to a stage in a time in your life where your children are going to be making quite a number of decisions for you you know you want to have trained your children to the point where they can make these solid decisions yeah all right um it's all of this and more all right that is needed in forming and making that well-balanced human being for the good of themselves and the society at large academics is a real thing especially for the first few years of growing up for every child in, in this current setting and if a child is excelling academically or not or the other way around if he's not excelling it's gonna affect the child i've seen I've had times when I was going to as a teenager and and I was depressed because I just changed school and I, I thought I was the smartest student and I've just got into this new school and I'm just I just appear to be done all of a sudden and my self esteem is just just down. And so how do parents help their kids, their children at the points where at different points like that where um, kids don't think that they're doing well academically, okay. and this seems to be affecting them psychologically. Okay. First of all, I would say being able to identify that there's even a challenge. Many children go through challenges without their parents having any idea that they're going through anything. Yeah. And so parents need to be observant. Parents need to um, understand their children to the point where they know um, the child is no longer enthusiastic about a subject or a teacher. You know. And this is by listening in on conversations. When you keep hearing your child talk about your teacher and then all of a sudden the child isn't talking about the teacher anymore, mm -hmm. then you begin to understand that there, must, there, there may be an issue. And um, I also I'll also say that parents who are fighters, you know, because there are some very aggressive parents who for everything the child says, they go back to the school and, you know, they give them the length of their tongues, you know. I don't think it works well with trust because a child should be able to come home and if the child says, Please, can you not discuss this? You know, um, sometimes a child just wants an ear to hear, um, to listen in on their challenges without going there to fight on their behalf because it's ultimately the child that is going to face the backlash while when the parent is gone. Yeah. And so um, just being able to understand now, if it also helps when you've understood the child's personality because if the child is naturally melancholic, all right yeah is a child naturally melancholic they can be prone to internalizing things and so being able to clarify by explaining things better you know is the world yeah being able to explain explain why certain challenges have come all right and you know what we also underestimate is how emotions play on our output okay and so the things that happen at home actually have a lot of bearing on academia. Yeah. Parents underestimate how children, because children smile, they play, they forget that, you know, some some somewhere down in their subconscious, all right, some things are working against their full potential, you know, because of certain um, issues that may be obtained at home. Yeah. And so um, I'd say that um, helping a child through their difficulties and challenges um, starts with 
knowing that there is a challenge mm -hmm. or there is, is a potential challenge or there's a challenge in the offing, you know. So the challenge is not quite there yet, but, you know, you've helped prepare the child, you know. And also debunking unrealistic expectations. You understand? Yeah. Um, understanding where your child's strength is. If the child's strength is not in sports, why do we expect the child to be the first? Best footballer in the world. Yeah, the best footballer in the world or to be the first at the relay race, you know. And then helping child children manage their expectations is really up to parents. Yeah. You know, because um, what unpleasant experience can deter a child from even trying again, all right? I also want to add that it's very important for parents to boost the self-confidence of their children. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in the areas where the children feel a little bit of insecurity, I think it's important that um, parents speak to that area, affirm them in those areas. It comes to the end of today's webinar, um, but I'll ask just one last question, something we bled. <laughs> Final, one last one. Um, when we were discussing the webinar, we, we said there are key decision points that the parents should watch out for. Um, is it possible to highlight some key points for our parents as if you want to prepare your child for the future, there are certain points that you should be well positioned for as a parent. Is that something you like to like speak to at this point? Nine months for a child to be born. And um, it has to be first an emotional decision. Um, so, followed by um, a mental and financial decision um, wrapped by a spiritual decision to be a guide, a guard for this child's destiny and this child's future. Um, I would like to say that um, the role of parenthood should not be underestimated. I'd like to add that um, parent. The, 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 the lack of parent parenting is what has caused a lot of anomalies in our society. And the last thing that we want to be is to add to that statistic, you know, um, our aim in this generation to be to help um, in this area, you know, to um, redefine what society should be. And it is first made up from the family and by the family unit. Today we've seen how much work needs to be done from the home and how things that is going on at home can affect a child's academic performance, really, and how parents need to make that conscious decision to, to, to help their child um, believe in themselves a lot more academically and how parents can collaborate with schools. Um, today, our guests, has been talking about the EDC of Six Sense, um, a mother, a pastor, and a businesswoman. And if you missed any of these videos, um, you can check up on our Facebook page, um, Greatly NG, to, to, to see. I believe it will be very, very helpful for you. Um, this, weekend, uh, this weekend, I'll be hosting a mathematics clinic uh, by 12 noon. Um, I'll be having Mr. D. Keaton, one of the best mathematics specialists in town. Um, come help students love mathematics and something type of webinar you also attend with your child. So plan for it to have known. You find the link um, after this webinar. Um, thank you very much. And this is brought to you by Gridly. Gridly dot Gridly is Nigeria's first adaptive learning platform. We help parents and schools personalize learning for students. We do this by providing you data and insights on how your child is performing. Every time this is week on week, every time your child does an homework, and um, we use that data to tailor learning resources, life tutoring, um, learning videos, and gamified practice to the child, just to make sure that the child can achieve mastery. We believe every child can achieve mastery, if intervention is early, and that's what we did greatly. Thank you for being part of this webinar. And once again, we're sorry for starting way behind schedule. We hope it was worth your time. We hope you're able to catch this relay. And please leave us some comments. Um, if there are questions that the question needs to answer, I promise to get them across to her, and I hope that we have the time to get you back to you. Thank you very much. I love myself. God bless you.